Hey guys, Ryan here for Bender Wins. Hope everyone's doing well today. And we are here with a new series, guys. I'm very excited for this one. This is the math of sports betting. So I'm gonna do a number of different videos where I cover the mathematics behind sports betting, guys. And math is probably the single most important thing in determining whether you have value in your place. To just blindly take a game without understanding the math behind it, what's creating that value, guys, that is sports betting suicide. So today we're gonna go over some of the most simplistic ways that we can determine value in part one, parlays. Okay, so first off guys, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I'm constantly talking about how parlays are a sucker's bet, and they are. Professionals rarely bet parlays, guys, and when we do, we almost always bet correlating parlays, meaning that one outcome will impact the other. So if we like, Boston Red Sox and we like the over because we believe that Boston is going to score a significant amount of runs and they're probably going to give up a few as well but they're going to out hit the other team win the game eight to five we will bet Boston and the over because we believe there's correlating value now the other way to bet a parlay a two-team parlay is a non-correlating value parlay bet okay so these are two bets where one impact has nothing to do with the other one so you might be betting the Toronto Blue Jays on the money line and you might be betting um, the Chicago Cubs on the money line. And you need these two teams to both win to be able to win your parlay. Well, the important thing in that, guys, is understanding that one does not impact the other. So you need an advantage in the numbers and not just the performance and capping of one specific team. So let's take a deeper look and try to figure out how we can determine whether there is value on our parlays or if there's not value on our parlays, okay? So part of this comes down to the mathematics and part of this comes down to our ability to handicap and understand long-term probabilities, okay? So I promise you guys, it's not as complicated as it may seem in the beginning, but I'll walk you guys through it. And again, um, if you're going to be sports betting uh, as a career, if you're going to be doing even as like semi-seriously guys, you need to understand the math behind it. I would suggest that everyone outside of the, you know, people that just want to throw five bucks down and just have some fun with it as their weekly lottery ticket. Um, I think it's important to understand math. So let's jump into it guys and let's find a way. I've always come out here and I've always said, don't bet parlays guys, because their opportunity to overcome a 10% house edge on a two team parlay is a lot harder than it is to overcome the four and a half percent house edge on a straight bet. Okay, so on a two team parlay, typically a 10% house edge versus a four and a half percent house edge on straight up bets. So I say straight up bets are better, but are there opportunities? Are there chances to bet two team parlays where it can actually be a positive expected value or positive EV? The answer, surprisingly, is yes there is opportunities, okay? So I'm actually gonna break down, I'm gonna show you one of those exact opportunities right now, and I'm gonna show you the math behind how the numbers work, okay? So let's take a look at this for a second, guys. First off, we wanna figure out uh, the probability of our two teams winning, okay? So in this particular game, guys, here's what we found, okay? We have two theoretical teams that we're gonna parlay, okay? They're both very large favorites. Team A, is minus 230 and team B is minus 230. So they're two very big favorites in this particular game. Now, this is where our handicapping skills come into play, okay? We have to determine of those two teams, what percentage of the time will these teams win, okay? And that is always what we're doing as cappers, okay? We wanna convert that percentage over into a probability and turn that into numbers, okay? We wanna turn that into an actual line, so what would the line be? And if you guys watch my daily picks videos, I'll say, well, we're, we're paying minus 230, but the line should be minus 285. That is because I'm extrapolating that number from a percentage that I'm guessing, give or take, that this team's gonna win. But I will tell you guys, so if you've seen my videos, you know about my death system, okay? The death system basically means that that team is going to lose, guys. Now I have a modified death system that I use for heavy favorites. These are favorites that are favored over 210, okay? So if they're minus 210 or higher and they fall into that death system, 
they win at a very, very high rate. In fact, they win at 74%. So for this particular example, I'm gonna use both these two teams. I kept the math very, very simple in the first one. We're gonna use the two teams and we're gonna say that my best assumption over the long term is these teams are gonna win about 64% of the time, okay? And we're paying minus 230 on both of them. So it's a lot of juice. Does it make sense to parlay these teams? Is it profitable? Let's find out, okay? So basically guys, when you have 74%, the easiest way to convert that over to mathematical probability is by changing this over to a fraction. So basically 74% is 0.74 of one, right? One being a whole number or 100%. This is 0.74, okay? So that's 74%. That's how you would represent 74% with a decimal point in front of it. So now you need to figure out the probability of both of those hitting. And it's a very simple mathematical equation despite the fact that it looks complicated, okay? So the probability of A and B is equal to probability A times probability B, okay? Now that might sound and look complicated, but it's really, really not. All we're doing here, guys, is we are gonna take the probability of A of point seven, four, okay? And when we are gonna multiply it by 0.74, okay? Now, um, what are we gonna get mathematically here, guys? Um, okay, you're gonna want an exact number. You're gonna want a calculator, guys. Uh, you're gonna be um, 54, pardon me, you're gonna be 54, 0.6%, okay? Double check my, double check that. But you're gonna be 64%, it's really easy. I don't have a calculator, but you're gonna to wanna to just take this into a calculator. 0 0.74 times 0.74 equals 54.6, okay? Now, um, it's actually going to display on the calculator as this, okay? So it's gonna display on the calculator as 0.4, or sorry, five, four, six, and then a, probably a bunch of numbers after that, okay? You can exclude the numbers after. But again, we're gonna take this number, the 0 0.546, and we're just gonna convert that over into a percentage, and all we do is just wipe that zero out and put the decimal point where the decimal point needs to be. And that gives us 54.6%, give or take. I, I'm sure that number is um, pretty close to spot on. Okay, so, um, 54.6%. So now what, what this is telling us guys is if, if our numbers are correct, okay, if our numbers are correct and we're gonna hit 74% in both of these games, then we would expect that the chances of both of these games winning will occur 54.6% of the time, okay? So we're gonna win parlay, or this parlay is gonna win at a rate of Let's call it, yeah, well, let's say 50, 54.6%, okay? So now, when we look at our odds here, and we're paying minus 230, and minus 230, when we put that together into a parlay, we get the odds of plus 105, okay? So we're gonna get plus 105 on our money, and we're winning at 54.6%. Does this work? Absolutely. That would be a profitable long-term parlay. We have enough that we've overcome the 10% house edge and we can actually beat Vegas long-term on a parlay like this. Now, do these opportunities come up every single day? No, it's rare that you get two games that fall under that system that you can have the probability of winning 74% and only have the odds being minus 230. So, Sometimes what you have to do is be patient, okay? If your book allows you to have open parlays, then you might want to find an opportunity out there where you're a, you're very confident in a 74% win rate. And it doesn't have to be 74, guys. You can do this, you can do this math the same way that I just did with just about any, any game and any percentage out there, okay? So again, if you, if you did this with uh, two games that were, you know, 50-50, okay? 
50, if it was 50, 50, right? If instead of that or that, we were talking 50% and 50%, well, we do the same mathematical formula, do the calculations and figure that we're gonna win that about, well, not about, we're gonna win that 25% of the time. So now we have to make sure that the odds that we have, we're gonna win 25% of the time. What do we need for odds? We need four to one or better. So you'll see that if you just parlay two games at minus 110, you're only gonna get back about 3.6 times your money, not four. That would not be a profitable bet, okay? So the math is there, guys, you can do it. The best thing to do is Look for the value, don't be, don't be in a rush, okay? If, you're, if your book allows you to have open parlays, open parlays mean you can create one end of a parlay now and you can close it out later, then you can utilize this to be able to open a, a good value parlay today and two or three days from now, a week from now, whenever you find that game that's a perfect value, fill that spot and you'll get plus money on a winning positive expectation win there guys and you can do that with any any amount of numbers okay you can play with the math guys the formula again very very simple for determining it guys and again if you want to do and i'm not recommending when you start to get up into three team parlays guys it is very very difficult very difficult to find um value there but if you want to determine probability of a three team parlay how do we do that what do we add very very simple another uh, another times Okay, P and then C, okay? So we would be basically, if it's the same thing, then we go 0 0.74 times 0.74 times 0.74. And you'll see each time you do that, it's gonna further decrease that percentage of the win. So you're gonna be ending up with a smaller percentage, but if you're parlaying three games, you're gonna have higher odds, okay? But at the end of the day, guys, it's important that you understand that the more you parlay bets, the larger the house edge gets. And when you start to get up into three team and especially four team, five team, six team guys, there is zero chance that you're ever going to beat the house edge, okay? With all the math in the world, with all the math in the world guys, you will never have an edge to beat five and six team and 17 parlays ever, okay? 0.0000, .0000 percent chance that you will ever beat five, six, 17 parlays, okay? And you probably won't even be able to beat 14 parlays. And three team parlays will be thin, but we can beat two team parlays, guys. Um, reason I tell you guys not to bet two team parlays in non-correlating games is it is difficult to determine to an exact certainty that value, that percentage where I say it's 74%, 74%, okay? Um, there's a lot of factors that go into it, guys, but if, if you feel confident in your ability to cap games, then you can make profit off of these parlays, guys. Um, in the upcoming future, if you guys are interested, when I give out some picks, I will give out some open parlays and say we will open a parlay today, and we can close it off on another day, okay? Every once in a while, a couple weeks ago, um, in one day, there was a parlay that presented itself um, that was in one day where both ends were there. But now we're talking like once or twice a month that that might occur where there's two events on one day that have enough positive value that you can turn them into a parlay in a non-correlating parlay, okay? So I hope I made this as simple as possible. This has turned into an absolute mess on me, guys. So. Throughout this series of the math of sports betting, I apologize, you are gonna have to bear with me, guys, and my handwriting, it's absolutely atrocious. But the substance is there, and I really wanna continue this series, guys. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Do you like this series? Um, is there certain mathematical questions you guys have about sports betting, how to figure out certain things? And I will walk you guys through more math of sports betting, okay? That is it for us today, guys. Thank you very much, and as always, guys, have a very lucky day.